Afala everyone, Toodles20 here and welcome back to episode 12 of Asada. In true Asadian form, I am joined by my good friend and collaborator Skibbeth. Skibbeth, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? Skibbeth isn't really here. I'm all on my own lonesome today and um, for good reason, I'm going to New York in a couple of days and I am frantically putting together a lot of episodes so you guys don't run dry of Tiddles 20 materials. So yeah, I'm on my lonesome today, which is all good because I do actually have some really, really cool things to show and I will be doing a little bit of a live play as well. So a little bit of what we're doing today. Um, last episode for me, I worked on this giant bridge and I didn't actually do much detailing of the underneath of it. I kind of was kind of saving it for a bit later because I knew it would be a really big job. Now, we have actually been holding out on doing some, a lot, like a lot of the residential development of our um, great nation and um, for good reason. And that is we've been waiting for our fellow collaborator, Bearded Monkey, to um, come with some really beautiful buildings. And I will actually show you what these buildings look like now. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, because this is such a unique um, series, we did actually need some residential buildings and some commercial buildings uh, that are really unique to our series. So I'm pleased to sh introduce some of um, the collection um, that are all Asarian buildings. And um, we're just going to plop them down now. They are all Rico and they are all now available on Bearded Monkey's uh, workshop. So definitely go and check them out. And if you do like them, definitely go and give them a thumbs up. And I mean, they're, they're super, super, super nice <laughs> in, in the most dreadful way possible. Uh, like the, he's done such a great job with them. And I'm really lucky to be the one that gets to plop them down. Um, I'm sure Skip is a little bit jealous. <laughs> I'm guaranteed he's jealous. Um, I've been wanting to play with these for ages and um, yeah, he's done a really, really good job of them. So, I mean, you're probably expecting me to work in the city now using these buildings, but instead I'm actually going to work on like a bit of an outskirt town. Um, a little bit like the one that I did a couple of episodes ago, but I kind of wanted to put it on this side of um, of Asara because you know it's an, it's an area that we haven't really developed too much and under this bridge I think it's like a really important part to kind of develop and uh, this is around here you know more of the heart of the city we have Skibbeth's giant dictator's house over here which is just ridiculous and um but I'm gonna be working on this under bridge sort of area here because you know there's this and I'm, I'm gonna show you some images right here this is of an area that I'm getting, drawing a lot of my inspiration from. And what I really love about this area is that on one side you have this dry, desolate desert, and on the other side you have what looks like quite lush, developed farmland. And I think that is a really cool, contradicting um, piece of, I can't call it architecture, but I guess city planning, whether it's planned or not. So, you know what, I'm going to attempt to do something like this and I've also kind of been like holding out using, uh, well actually building some uh, farmlands. Uh, there've been some really cool, you know, farm props that have been out lately, but you know, the most, like the best one I've seen that's just recently come out is um, just, it's so cool. It's these beautiful fields that I'm just gonna use, find it to find them just like that. And um, you've probably seen Corrales talk about these a little bit and um, man, like they're just going to be so good. They're going to fit really nicely. There's actually quite a lot of farming in this area and I think it kind of suits to kind of uh, build it in this sort of area, the outskirts of Asada. Um, it's such a shame with this flickering that, I mean, you can see that flickering right now, especially as I move around. If anyone knows how to fix that, <laughs> Skipper and I will just be the most appreciative guys ever. But yeah. This is what I'm going to be using, a whole bunch of these uh, cornfields. Man, I can't remember the, there we go. Um, it's by Dezaka. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be using your fields. They're, um, they're bloody beautiful. But yeah, let's get into the time-lapse and I'm gonna start building right now. 
so obviously I'm recording this after I've um, built this area and um, can I just say that I really thought I was gonna get a lot more done than I really did plopping farms is hard don't let that fool you the fact that they're just these already pre-made things and you think you can just plop them down there and take up heaps of space um, that was totally not the case it took ages especially the detailing part um, so really I've only, I only got done probably um, a fraction of what I really wanted to achieve in this episode but I did probably get too distracted with um, Bit of Monkey's awesome new buildings as you can see me plopping them down right now they're just so nice and I, I had to um I really wanted to make like a little kind of outer skirts town and I kind of got a bit carried away with the detailing a little bit um, so yeah, that was something that happened. <laughs> um, but to be honest, I don't really detail this area as much as, um, some other areas that I've detailed in Asada and purely because, and this is something that I do in Springwood. If you go into too much detail in every little bit, then you kind of, you get really tired of working on it. Uh, and I don't really want to get tired of this area. So, you know, just kind of detailing certain parts that you're really interested in is a really good way of making kind of achievable goals, I guess. And um, and in terms of like what the focus point of this little town is, um, I kind of didn't really want it to be the entire town. It's not really much of a feature. It's just an outskirts town. It's kind of only just established um, on the highway um, as, you know, people are kind of entering and leaving um, the capital city. So... You know, I didn't really want to go into the huge amounts of detail. Um, a little bit about this town, it's, it's situated, I guess, south of um, the capital city. And uh, I wanted it to be pretty, pretty run down and uh, a little bit, um, a bit more of like a kind of a farming community, I guess, with a bit of an industrial uh, commercial hub in the center. That was kind of what I was going for. Um, I was really just playing with uh, Bearded Monkey's new buildings. I uh, was super excited to use them. And kind of just filling out these back lots, as you can see me doing, with some more assets by him of, um, you know, some of the sheds. And they, they work really well to kind of fill some gaps that, you know, are quite open. And um, it's also helpful to kind of increase the general population of Asada, which is, um, you know, something that Skib and I are definitely working on. This sort of little area, I'm uh, basing this off, I guess, little farming communities that um, I found in Egypt. And uh, I wanted this to be a bit of a little farming community because I feel like that's the sort of, you know, a, the sort of place where I, you, I'd expect a lot of farms to kind of establish on the outskirts of the city. And... You know, it might kind of seem a bit weird that there's so much, you know, that I'm actually placing down farms in a desert. I'd like it. it I know it doesn't really seem right, but, you know, reflecting on those pictures that I showed before, it's, it is actually quite a lush area, you know, and I guess crops would be quite uh, well suited for this environment being right on the water. And, you know, this is quite next to the water. So, um, you know, this kind of area is less deserty than... Uh, I guess the outer edges of Asada is uh, so you know that's kind of a bit of a justification for me and um, you know I think they really they suit it really well uh, this kind of little town it really reminds me of some places that I've visited and uh, particularly around like the border um, areas of uh, countries you know when you kind of uh, jump into a new country and you're kind of stuck in this awkward border town you know definitely in the least popular uh, least touristy areas of um, countries you know when you jump into a weird border you know I, I kind of wanted to go for that look and thinking about that also I, I want to make now that we have these really lovely buildings I want to kind of start making some more outer city towns because they just fit so well I think they've they suit the area really well one area that I really want to develop at some stage is the town that's going to sit right really close to the border of Asada and one that's really close to the pyramids that I built all the way ago in episode four. 
So, and no, it's so good. It's so cool having these new buildings and, you know, all the possibilities and all the inspirations all flooding in. So, yeah, that's the tricky part with working with another person is that you just want to, once you start building, you really, you really don't want to stop. Um, and that was definitely the case in this one. I was, um, you know, building a lot of these farms and uh, at some stage I was like, okay, that's, that's probably enough time and I've actually had to cut a lot of footage that um, you know I'll demonstrate a little bit in the cinematics at the end but you know we do miss a bit of it in the time lapse. Now we're starting to work on a bit of the farmland and I wanted to make these roads not particularly straight I wanted them to be quite natural looking not like they're um, they've been really well planned out they kind of a bit more you know happened over time as the cities expand and expanded and uh, you know people are just kind of making roads where they see fit and the tricky part about that is the farms that I wanted to use the fields they are yeah <laughs> they're like perfectly straight so you know I kind of encountered that problem pretty early on and um, you know, I think I might only use these farms probably in just some areas and in other areas I'll probably just, uh, you'll, you'll see what I'll do a little bit later on. I won't spoil too much, but a little, later, a little later on I kind of work on some other farms that don't actually use these farmlands and, you know, they, they turn out pretty cool too. Um, so that's the tricky part we're using these. Plus I'm getting like an awful flicker. I don't know if it's coming through in the time lapse right now, but the flickering, oh, it's just, it's just the, it's, it's the worst. And it's really strange. So it seems to happen on the shadows in Osada and I get it heaps in my other series in Australia, but I, I get no flickering whatsoever in Springwood. Now, like I, I don't really have the time to be going through all my mods and my assets to check which, like what's the difference. But if anyone's got any theories, I mean, I've, I've got, I've got all my assets up on the collections. So, I mean, you have basically access to check them out. If you've got any ideas, what could be making this flickering? Um, I think it's, it's affecting a lot of people. I'm really happy it's not happening in Springwood, but yeah, it's just, it's killer. It's killer for the cinematics, not so much for the time lapses, but you know, in terms of cinematics, it's just, it's the worst. <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to break up a little bit of the green. And I'm kind of noticing that plopping down a lot of that grass texture is just a little too strong. So I'm just using uh, a bit of the dirt to kind of, uh, you know, make a bit of a, but it breaks up a bit of the greenness, which I'm, you know, something I kind of really need to do. And I think the effect's pretty cool. Like it kind of looks like, you know, uh, trucks have been going down these dirt paths and all the dirt's been kicking off the dirt, off the, um, off the dirt road and going into the fields. So, you know, I think there looks pretty cool. And um, yeah, definitely, definitely something I'm gonna kind of do in a little bit more of the area. Like I, I actually really like the way this texture blends in with the grass. It's, it just, it just breaks up really nicely. It's such an easy one um, if you're, unfamiliar with what we're using this is the ground texture for this um, particular thing that I'm using is for uh, Springwood <laughs> that wasn't really the best explanation but I um, don't really else don't really know else to explain it but you know I think that looks pretty sweet what I'm doing on camera is I'm pretty much making my very first farm and I'm just trying to like think about how a farm would look in a community like this and I kind of think that the look would be, you know, kind of like a bit of a, uh, a family house and with a bit more of like a private sort of farmland. You know, a lot of these area, a lot of these farms that I'm kind of working off uh, for inspiration kind of look like they're privately owned and maybe they're just kind of general use farms rather than giant commercial ones. Like I, I assume that a lot of these sort of people who work on these farms are family members or live in like a small kind of community which you saw me plop down before and they'd probably sell these uh you know their crops at markets or to kind of bigger supermarkets or something like that but you know we're not really talking about 
massive fields. These are really just smaller, maybe not even commercial, but like just smaller fields where just probably family members would tend to. So, you know, I was trying to, you know, make it look like it was a smaller field. And it, it actually just makes it more trickier for me because <laughs> there's just more fields that I have to kind of build, which is tricky with these, you know, with what I'm doing because these are so square. It's really, really, really hard to, you know, place down on these curvy roads that I've made. So you'll see me attempt a few of them. I do kind of bail a little bit on that idea. Uh, I will continue to work on this area. Maybe like a little bit off camera because it's not so repeated, but these these farm the farmland that crops the fields look so good. I'm like really happy to use them, but it's just um it's tricky with these curvy roads. So I don't know. I might use a bit of both. But tell me in the comments below if you think that the looks good. I I try to hide a bit of the edges using these trees as you can see, but I don't really want to go too overboard with trees because I don't think this is you know it might be a little bit lusher than. A, f a desert would be, but I, I really don't think there's huge amounts of trees. So, you know, I'm trying to get a bit of a balance between a bit of lushness, but ultimately a kind of a dry area. And, um, you know, I'm kind of hoping that I get that look. And, you know, I think it's a really cool, really cool with that giant bridge kind of like looming over these fields. I think it's like a really cool kind of contradiction between the two nature and you know, industrial sort of, uh, you know, maybe even like progression, <laughs> if you can, I don't know what I mean. You know, these people kind of work on the farm down here where the government's building giants, uh, bridges over the top of them. I kind of like, it was a bit of an accident, uh, doing that, but I'm, I'm actually really happy with that sort of look. And right now I'm, I'm kind of placing a bit more of a, a bit more of a business of a farm. And, you know, I kind of want a bit of a, a mix between business and uh, more family run farms. So this one's a bit more of the business end. And like, I haven't even built farms in Springwood. So this is like really my first crack at farms in City of Skylines. It's funny actually, because it's it's funny how many firsts I'm having. Like I keep, I'm like a little bit like conscious that eventually I'm going to really, you know, oh, Tittles 20 builds a suburb, oh, builds a bridge. And everyone's just gonna be like, well, well, but you know, congratulations, you built another bridge. Well, I, I actually haven't really like gotten to that point yet. It seems to, I feel like I'm always building things that I haven't built before. Um, I know that, you know, I'll, I'll build something like a bridge and go, oh, well now I've built a bridge. I know how to do a bridge. And then I seem to never do a bridge again. It's, it's, it's it just feels, it feels that way. I never seem to revisit the things that I've already built, um, which is kind of annoying, but also a uh, pretty convenient I guess. <laughs> I guess it's pretty convenient um, for the channel. Um, I'm working on a kind of a different type of farm now, so going for a slightly different technique. I've placed down a couple of houses uh, to, you know, acting as uh, the family house, the people who um, own this land, and just marking where I want the farms to go using the fences. And for these particular ones I'm not using so many I'm not really using the fields I might use a field for one or two but I'm just trying out a couple of different techniques some techniques that I'm going to carry on in uh, you know a little bit later on in this um, series please let me know if you've enjoyed the farms and if you've got any tips and tricks uh, particularly if you've uploaded a video of you using these farms for the, these fields I'd really love to check them out and get a bit of an idea of how to place them down I was really excited when Corrales started, you know, placed them down. I thought he might use them so I could get a bit of inspiration, but then he um, built something different. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully someone revisits, uh, you know, does something like that. Then I am just kind of making this field here just with a lot of grass. You saw me place down the savanna grass. Um, I kind of wanted that field to almost look like it's abandoned and um you know there's gonna be a real mix of fields in this sort of area it's gonna be ones that are really well tends to and some that are have seen better days so um you know that's definitely one that's seen better days and um and i'm also trying to cover up these pedestrian crossings this they just there was like i remember when i first got this game there was a few things that really bugged me and 
the and the amount of pedestrian crossings really bugged me. And um, you know, it's really cool that we got like things that we can just cover them up now. It's just a matter of kind of being diligent and covering them up. But I know in Springwood, I just I just have them hidden all the time because I'm, I I hate them so much. <laughs> it looks so unrealistic. Um, being on every corner, that's um, definitely not something that happens all the time. Um, but hey, guys, that's pretty much it. Hey, I survived my very first Asara by myself commentary. <laughs> I hope it's just as interesting for you guys. Uh, I definitely struggle by myself. Skip and I seem to talk and all of a sudden our 25 minutes are up. So um, yeah, definitely be looking forward to chatting to him in the next episode. But yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. It's always much appreciated. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these farms, of this little outskirt town. Hey, this outskirt town doesn't even have a name. So if you want to chuck out a name there, that would be really cool. I love the names you guys come up with for this series is way better than the things that we come up with. So definitely hit us up below or even on our Twitter. Link is in below. And um, yeah. Thanks guys for tuning in, always much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you so feel like it. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya.